Pastor A.G. Eads of the Great Commission Church here in Berea is going to bring our message today. I'm thankful for Brother A.G. and his ministry. He's a blessing in my life and the lives of the folks on this platform and many of your lives. Yes. Uh, I'm thankful that there's a younger generation coming because one day I'm not going to be able to do this any longer. And it's th it blesses my heart to know that there are men who will stand firmly upon the Word of God and got a backbone and will preach what God lays on their hearts. And He's going to bring our message. And uh, then in, after He's finished, uh, Pastor Tim Lawson is going to come and He's going to uh, lead us in amazing grace as a group hymn. All of us know that one, I hope. And uh, then uh, Brother Chad Burdett's going to come. But I'll step back up in just a moment after uh, Brother Tim uh, leads us in amazing grace when Brother H.E. is done. Come and preach, my brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I really appreciate this opportunity today to get to take part in such a special event proclaiming what God's Word tells us. I, I want to start by thinking, thank you. That was going to be hard for the next 45 minutes. I'm just kidding. I want to thank Pastor Kenny Davis with Bethel Baptist Church for leading this amazing event, this wonderful day, for praying that the rain would hold off and that God answered that prayer. Uh, I thank Mayor Fraley uh, for taking part today and it is such an honor to serve in this city under his leadership. I think, I think all of these pastors that are here today and even the ones that couldn't be here, I wanna say in, in Berea, Kentucky and in this community, the county, Madison County, we have wonderful churches led by amazing pastors we have absolutely wonderful men of god and i i hope today that i am standing before you speaking on behalf of each and every one of them i hope that my words reflect what they would say and i'm glad that i have this opportunity today and I'm praying for all the ones, all the other towns and areas and cities in this nation that are praying and someone is speaking at the same moment as I'm speaking. Our theme for today, if you don't know, is to love one another. And we find this passage in John chapter number 13 in verse 34. And the scripture says a new commandment. I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. Yes. And the next verse says, And by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. I know in our great city of Berea and all over this state of Kentucky and the United States of America and across this entire world, there is a cry today and a need for more of God's love. God has commanded us time after time through His Word to love one another. And, and even further than that, to love one another as I have loved you. And I want to share today how much our Heavenly Father loves us. He bankrupted in heaven one day and sent the very best thing that was there. He sent His only begotten Son Amen. to come to this sinful world and be the ultimate sacrifice for sin. Yes, he and He says, love one another as I have loved you. We read that greater love hath no man than this, than a man would lay down his life for his friends. The love that Christ showed us at Calvary. And he says, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. That's what he says. Today, I feel that this is what God has called His church to do. To love one another. To spread His undying love. 
We're here today because we love God. And because we believe in the power of prayer. It has been spoke so far. We have prayed over several different topics. And who today believes that our God heard each and every one? Let's give God praise today that all of Berea would hear us this afternoon. We love God and we believe in the power of prayer. And today I want to share a story that Jesus quoted about love. One day there was a lawyer that spoke up and asked Jesus, and he says, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, after a little bit going back and forth, says these words. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Love God. Love people. So the lawyer in return asks the question, who is my neighbor? And I think Jesus goes with the story and tells him something that he's probably not expecting. You see, Jesus didn't say the guy or the lady that lives next door. He didn't say it's the man that serves on your deacon board. Or the, the lady that leads worship every Sunday at your church. Or even those that have the same mentality and ideas and opinions as you have. But he tells a story about a man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. He was beaten up by a group of bandits and left for dead. And as the story goes, Jesus tells that a priest comes along the way. And he sees this man laying in the ditch, beaten to death. And the priest sees the situation, and he passes by on the other side. Again, another person, a Levite, comes through, and he sees this man in his condition, and he passes on the other side of the road as the first man did. But then there was someone else that come through who's glad that someone made an extra trip for you. There was one that was called a Good Samaritan that comes through that sees this man laying in the ditch and he says, I have to help that man. And he goes to him and he sees the situation, he sees the need, and he picks the man up, and he puts him on his animal, and he takes him into town, into the nearest place of help. He puts him in an inn, and he leaves money for his care. And he says this, if after this is over, after today, tomorrow, if there's more expense to this bill, you come and let me know. I'm going to take care of it. So Jesus said, who was the neighbor? It was the one that had compassion. It was the one that had love. It was the one that took time to help the one that was in need. You see, I wanted to proclaim today in Berea, Kentucky, that love is more than a four-letter word. But that love is a verb. That love is more than just something that we say so, so carelessly. That word that we just throw out because it seems like the right thing to say. But I want to say today that love is a verb. That there needs to be action behind the words that we speak. 
I said we're here today because we love God, because we believe in prayer. Yes. I believe that I am speaking to the church. Amen. And I want to give encouragement, but I also want to give instruction today. Let, don't let us be just the Christian that says, I believe. Though I don't want to be the one that has the bumper sticker and, 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 I, and I wear the tie on Sunday morning that says I love Jesus. I don't want to be the Facebook warrior that wants the world to know how much I love the Lord and how much I believe and how great that I am. But we read in the book of Acts about a group of people at Antioch the very first time that the that the the phrase that the term was used and at Antioch they were called Christians. Amen. And you know why they were called Christians? Because their attitude and their actions resembled their their savior, Jesus Christ. Their actions were becoming more and more like their hero, their leader. My cry today for Berea is don't just let us love in word, Come on, brother. but in deed and in truth. Yes. Yes. This story tells about a man that sees another one in the ditch in the greatest need of his life. And I want to give a few points. He stopped. He took time out of his busy schedule. Does anyone here know what that's like? I'm bivocational. Sometimes I might work 50, 60, or plus hours a week, plus pass, uh, serving a senior pastor here in town. I know what it's like to have a busy schedule. But busy is not an excuse to ignore someone that has needs. Busy is not an excuse to not show God's love to this lost and dying world. He stopped and he took time to see what was going on. He didn't avoid this man. He picked him up. He didn't leave him in his current condition. God has called the church to pick up the lost of this world. The ones that are in need. The ones that don't know Christ. We're not to just settle for that people are going to stay in that condition for the rest of their life. But God is using us to bring change and to bring good change yes. upon this world. Yes. He took him to get help. He didn't just say, look, if you get up, wipe yourself off, go six blocks up the road, turn right, take the next left, no, he put him on his beast, on his own animal, right. on his own donkey, on his own horse. He took him right. into the place to get help. He didn't just tell him, but he says, look, this is where you can get help. Yeah. Yeah. I want to proclaim today that there is help in Jesus Christ. Amen. In the presence of an almighty, a loving God. Right. There is help for the opioid yeah. addiction. There is hope in our school system. Yes. There is hope in our local and our federal governments. Yes. There is hope in, in the midst of our first responders. There is hope today because of Jesus. That's so why I give Him praise. It's all about Him today. Yes, he went above and beyond what could be expected of Him to do.